I'm James Taylor. I'm going to show you how to make this guy from start to finish, beginning with the sculpt. This tutorial focuses on the idea of progressive detailing, so we're going to start big by defining the basic shape of our character. I'll begin by using my grab brush to reshape the mud box base mesh. And I want to use as big a brush as possible with the grab brush. That'll give me the best results. And I can very quickly reshape the mesh using the grab brush. Next, I'll use the bulge brush. The bulge brush adds a lot of volume very quickly, and it's really great for blockouts like this where we're still defining the shape of our character. Once I've got a shape I'm happy with, I'm going to turn on my wax brush, and I'll use it to create muscle shapes very quickly. Now, this is very similar to the technique in my Creating Muscles tutorial. You can check out the vid for more. What's really important to note here is the general workflow. I want to block out the overall shape of my character before I start adding any sort of detail. I want to get the overall layout done before I start focusing my attention in any one area. Since I am focused on creating the hull, at this point my camera is still kind of far away from the character. This lets me see the entire character at one time. It keeps me looking at that overall shape. Here I've turned on my foamy brush, and I use the foamy brush in a very specific way. I always have it set to a negative value, and it has a sharp fall off on it. This means that I can use the foamy brush to cut in very sharp details. And this is in contrast to the wax tool, which I use to build up the surface. My foamy brush I use to cut into the surface to take away volume. And speaking of volume, you see that I'm using my bulge tool to add some volume into the legs here. And I can also use the bulge to build up the area around the horns and then use the grab tool to push that into shape. In this way, I can quickly add geometry that didn't exist on my mesh. So we iteratively continue to build detail. We block out shapes and cut in finer detail using a sharp negative brush or using our pinch brush. And generally, after almost every stroke, we're going to be using our smooth brush to blend things together. Here you'll see I'm using the fill tool to create a stretched skin effect. We'll go into more detail on this later. So the stretched skin is part of exaggerating this guy's physique. We want him to look really monstrous, and that means that we're going to be exaggerating his anatomy. However, we have to understand base anatomy before we can start to exaggerate it. So we can really go over the top with muscles on a character like this, but we do need to have something that is somewhat human so that the viewer can relate to it and understand what they're seeing. One thing to note, now that I'm adding more detail, my camera is closer to my character. So up to this point, we've been working symmetrically. Now I'm going to turn symmetry off and use my grab brush to move things around and to break symmetry. Organic creatures are not symmetrical, and the viewer is going to notice this most along the line of symmetry. So the front of the character, the face, the chest, the abdomen, those are areas that we want to focus our asymmetry in. Okay, back to the idea of progressively adding detail. I want to sculpt on a sculpt level until the entire character is covered with a similar level of detail. Only then will I subdivide and step up to a higher level of subdivision detail. And when I do step to that higher level of detail, then I can start to carve in sharper and sharper details. So in this case, I'm using the sharp negative foamy brush and my pinch tool to create much sharper shapes on my mesh. Our goal is to create a mesh that has nice sharp detail, and to do that we need contrast. So I'll find areas that have soft feeling details, and I'll carve in around the edges of those using uh, a negative foamy to carve in, or my pinch brush to sharpen, or a positive foamy to add to the area to create a positive ridge. Again, we're creating contrast to counteract the natural softness of our sculpted mesh. So this stretched skin effect not only makes my guy look more monstrous, but it adds a lot of contrast. It's got a lot of nice, sharp details around the edges. To do this, I'm using my fill brush, and the fill brush you basically use it in valleys, areas between two raised points, and the fill brush will kind of fill in that valley to meet that high point of those two raised points. Difficult to describe, but once you start using it, it's very easy. However, I can't just simply fill in those areas. I also want to use it in conjunction with my foamy brush to kind of cut in negative areas in the middle to get an even more stretched, a more taut skin look. 
And by combining these two tools with the overall muscle shape, I'm adding contrast because I've got these nice, sharp, fine details and those contrast with these big, broad muscle shapes. We also have the plus side that it makes the guy look like he's insanely ripped. Now you'll see if you compare the sculpting I'm doing at this part of the video to the sculpting I was doing in the beginning of the video, you'll see that I'm using smaller brush sizes and I'm sculpting in smaller and smaller areas. Since I'm progressively adding detail, as that detail gets up to higher and higher levels of resolution, I have to make much more fine resolution changes. So I'm sculpting over smaller areas to add more and more detail into those small areas. And that's what's going to create that really fine level of detail that makes our model pop. And since this is a pretty stylized character that I'm working on, I can add a lot of detail that we wouldn't be able to add on a more realistic character. So we can do a lot more fun stuff when we're sculpting at these high levels of resolution. Now onto the head. And the head is basically the same process that we used before. I start off using big, broad brushes, my grab brush, my wax brush, to very quickly block in detail on the surface. And this is what progressive detailing is about. You start broad and then dial it in. We'll see that I'm using my grab brush to make overall changes to the shape of the head. That's a lot easier to do at lower levels of resolution than it is at high levels of resolution. That's why we want to get it handled in the beginning so that we don't have to worry about it later. Now I'm at the high level of detail for the head and I'm adding detail the same way that I was doing it on the body. I'm using sharp brushes to carve in detail. I'm using my pinch brush to focus detail. And because the face and the head of a character is such a focal point for our viewer's attention, we're probably going to need to spend a lot more time adding detail to the surfaces here than we do to any other part of the body. So we'll see that my camera is in much closer. I'm adding much smaller lines and I'm covering a lot more of the surface with these small details. Depending on the art style that you're working in, plan on spending as much time working on the head as you do on the rest of the body put together. That's how important it is. Now progressive detail should reduce the number of mistakes that we make, but it won't eliminate them. And so the next video is going to talk about a tool that makes revisions a lot easier, the Transfer Details tool in Mudbox. I'm James Taylor, and thanks for watching. Drop me a comment and let me know what you thought of the video.